starts right now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Como 4 News at 5 o'clock. It has been an interesting day at Fisher Plaza, to say the least. We are outside on this deck at Fisher Plaza because, simply, Fisher Plaza tonight has sort of become the news. Yeah, last night uh, we had an electrical fire in the building where we normally bring you the news. Most importantly, nobody was hurt. The building is fine. The power is just out. So at Fisher Plaza here, we have a couple of buildings. We're fortunate with these two six-story buildings, and we're able to bring you the news from our other building while we wait for the power to be restored to the building where we broadcast on a daily basis. We're trying to look at this as a bit of an adventure for you. Now, to give you some proximity, in case you've never been to Fisher Plaza, it's across the alley here in this building to our left. That's where the newsroom is. That's where the news gathering takes place. And you need to know, our ability to gather news has not been affected at all. The set is the same. Our newsroom is okay. It's just that the power is off. Once that power is turned on, Como 4 News is going to look to you at home the way it, it has always looked. And there is a chance that could happen uh, sometime before this day is over with. We certainly hope so, but you can count on us. We're going to continue to bring you the news from uh, our decks here at Fisher Plaza. Joining us now is Matt Markovich to give us an idea of what exactly happened last night, Matt. Well, Eric, it's been challenging not just for us, but for everyone here in Fisher Plaza. And the latest word we have is that the power will be restored very shortly. But again, a lot of people had to shift a lot of different gears to come up with some creative ways to do business today. Right in the middle of our 11 p.m. newscast last night, smoke began billowing from underneath the building. It was evacuated. This morning, we saw the damage. The electrical fire began here. And this is what uh, what triggered the entire event. That's the voice of Como Chief Engineer John Barrett, who says it burned at an amazing 5,000 degrees, so hot it crystallized copper. We got probably 50, 60 people on site working on this job uh, just to get back up. Get to working speed means scrambling to come up with ways to stay on the air. Without any power, the Como morning crew was forced to go elsewhere. As you can see, we've set up shop out here at Cary Park. We built a makeshift set in a park overlooking Seattle and did the news with satellite trucks that fed the signal. Creative improvisation with some old fashioned thrown in. Nothing but blue sky and without our weather maps, we have a 1975 version, but the weather's going to be excellent outside. But inside Fisher Plaza East, it was anything but excellent. Not only is the five-story building home to Como TV, it's also a major communications hub for dozens of companies, including Verizon, AT&T, and Quest. There are floors of computer servers run by smaller firms, like the one Brett Rutherford operates. We're, we're out it, and so we're, we're being nimble and going and getting our gear and going to light it up somewhere else. The outage affected Microsoft's new search engine, Bing. Thousands of internet purchases did not go through because one of the largest credit card authorization companies has its computers here and they were all shut down. Fisher brought in generators of all sizes, from the kind you use at home to the ones the size of semi trucks. Normally at this time of day, our newsroom would be buzzing with people with the power out. We all had to move to alternative places, including our radio station, Como News 1000. They're dark and they had to move to the transmitter site. Como news time is 10.51. Our transmitter site on top of Queen Anne Hill. Call it instant radio newsroom on the fly. And you know, this is a big camping weekend. It's kind of like camping on the radio. We're going to the, the facility here. We don't quite have everything. It's not quite perfect, but it's fun. And if you listen to KPLZ FM, what you heard came from this digital music box, no bigger than a CD player. For us, call it satellite truck roulette. With one receiving the signal you're now watching, plugged right into our tower. We had that entire building down there, yeah. which has been down converted to just this. Uh, literally two pieces of equipment. Basically, this is the equivalent of, of going to the transmitter and plugging right in. Now, Fisher Communications, the parent of our company, has released this statement saying that Fisher engineers are working with Seattle City Light and the company that manages the building to restore power and determine the cause of the electrical problem. Again, nobody was injured. Everybody got out safely. And we're coming close to restoring power to our digs, which we can hopefully get back in a little bit later tonight. Guys. I think, yeah, I heard people saying, and I know a lot of smart people are working very hard right now. They're hoping we can get on back in our set at 11 o'clock tonight. If not, then tomorrow, right? That's the word I'm hearing. And then the other thing is comonews.com, our website is going full bore, so if you need 
news, you can always get it there as well. Yeah, so here we are, you know, kind of winging it to a degree, but we do want to take just one brief second to thank the great people on our team here at Como. I mean, a lot of people have gotten creative today. A lot of people have put in a long, hard day with a lot of hard work, and we thank them very much so we're able to bring you this newscast here today in a little bit of a makeshift situation, but we're going to have some fun with it, even though we do have to get to the news now, and there is some serious business to take care of. Twelve families are out this year and has arrived earlier because of the weather we're having today and that we've had so much of. We've marveled at it, but this hot, dry weather does have a downside. To you know, Dan, we picked the hottest day of the year yeah. and the hottest time of the day <laughs> to, to, be to be outside. <laughs> it Jim, is. Jim Castillo joined us. You're doing this old school today, buddy. Yeah, old school. Lisa Jaffe, my graphic artist. Artist and we have to make some maps for you and it show you how hot it really is but we'll get to that coming up you know what we have is a red flag warning that's in effect what that simply means is we have low humidity really high heat it's going to be that way all weekend long we're not going to get a break from this heat and even with the fourth of july high fire danger will continue and here's just uh, some of the maps that we have for you tonight. Lows tonight about 59 in Seattle, 55 in Everett. So it's going to cool down nicely. But, you know, high temperatures today managed to get up there in the mid to upper 80s, even around 90. And real quickly, here's one of the maps coming up in just a few minutes just to show you that uh, Seattle is at 86 currently, Bellingham 79, Olympia at about 89 degrees. So there's some hot numbers out there for you. And coming up, more maps like these. Your printing yeah. wasn't good enough. You had Elisa Jaffe do that for yeah, you. Yeah, she is a, in case the much better than me. In case me. the temperature changes. <laughs> Thank you. We need that. Alexa out. Thanks, Thanks guys. Yeah. <laughs>